Good morning and welcome to a special morning job. brought to you as always by our friends at the Get-Go Cafe and Market, where good people like Cam Hayward go to get their coffee. And yes, Cam Hayward is a partner with Get-Go, just as we are. A good friend of Cam Hayward's is joining us uh, on, uh, on, on Java today, and that's, of course, our friend, our new contributor, Ramon Foster, down in Tennessee. Hi, Ramon. What's going on, man? <laughs> I don't know. You're, you're such a big star today. Like, I don't even know. What, I, I'm humbled in your presence. We'll, we'll see, you know, what, what backlash you get if I decide to write something else, you know. Or oh, oh here it be. comes. Well, we'll, we'll see how that goes and how much you like me then. <laughs> I did say you could do whatever you want. So, I, I, like you wrote in the column, I might have that coming to me here. This is a, a question I've gotten a lot from readers. Um, why? Why? Why writing? I mean, I did say well, you could do anything. We could have just done a bunch yeah. of Javas. Uh, you know, why, why writing? Because writing gives you a chance to actually, for me, it gives you a chance to express what you need to the words. And I think sometimes we'll talk or say something too quick, and we might say something we don't mean sometimes, or you might need another 45 minutes to actually get the full thought through. Because I sent you the article, and I was like, oh, I forgot something else. You know, and that's one of those things where I can I can do that. But also, it's, it's being around guys that play my position uh, and O line, or just a game of football in general. Uh, Coach Munch is always one of those guys that try to do more, read more, or, or be able to challenge yourself mentally. Because you know, a lot of stuff goes on with the game of football, and I think you know, I've always said I've had this conversation with my wife and other people too. I've been intimate with about you know, have intimate conversations with about the game of, of, of football is a lot of our issues that we have for the most part is based on the quality of life we have with, with people around us, the conversations, the, uh, the friendships. Uh, Alejandro has been one of my biggest uh, fans. It's great that I met him later in my career the way I did because he always says, you know, the, uh, the quality of, your, of a person's retirement or life is based off friends, based off of people, relationships, being able to talk. And it's so many of us that have stuff bottled up of football players with the most macho guys in the world. Or you can say that about hockey players or, or basketball or whoever, but nobody gets a chance to actually express that type of stuff. And I'm, I'm glad you asked me to. Yeah, it's great having you. It's funny, you mentioned Ali, and he's a guy that everybody knows of, uh, not just for being what he is as a pro ball left tackle, but also, mm -hmm. uh, and, and more prominently, I think, for, for his, his service to our country. But the thing that I've, I've always found most fascinating and challenging about him is that if you say something to him and you think you have an answer, that's kind of, you know what I'm going to say here, <laughs> He does not come back with the expected answer. Not to be a contrarian, just because yeah. he, his 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 roots are that deep. And one thing that I've I've always loved about hanging around your whole group, and this includes Marcus Gilbert when he was uh, yeah. with the team, is that uh, there's always an extra thought put into whatever the answers are. And that's why people like me were always going to gravitate toward the offensive line because we're not yeah. looking for the standard. Uh, you know, we're just getting hyped up for Sunday type of answers. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what I challenged you in turn was when we talked about writing, I said, whatever you do, don't disrupt the flow from here to yeah. here. You know, it, it's as simple as that. If you, if you could write like you speak, like you have spoken with all of us for years, this was absolutely going to work. Yeah, uh, and and it's it's the cool and you it's crazy you gave me the option like what well, do you want to do video you want to do vlogs you want to do you know all that I was like no I'd rather write and I could hear your response in your text he's like that's surprising <laughs> you know because it it is uh, I, I I like to do that it's funny I did the NFL uh, bro, uh what was it boot camp broadcast boot camp and um it was getting back to me that they were actually still using my sample that I had wrote for like other classes that they were uh, bringing kids through. I mean, I said bringing kids through, bringing players through that wanted to do the broadcast boot camp. So I, I've always kind of enjoyed that aspect of it. And not only just that, but it's everybody wants to be on TV. And I think it's probably more commendable to be able to write some. And, and if you're able to write, then you're able to speak it on TV too. So I, I like this. Uh, 
I, I like uh, being able to express myself, but being on TV every day might not be a thing for me. So I just like to do this. Okay, they're not in OTAs or mini camp, and they're not in Latrobe yet. Eventually, they're going to be, and it's gonna. It, somebody as emotional as you, somebody as invested as you, not just in football but also in the Pittsburgh Steelers, it's gonna hit you. Um, wh where's your Where's your mind? Where's your heart right now as it relates to everything? Because I know how sound you felt about the decision and everything, but you know, what are you expecting here and how are you almost guarding against it? Uh, you know, I'm open to it. You say that, but I'm open to it a hundred percent. I'm looking forward to it more than anything. I'll be quite honest, whether that, you know, the Steelers make a run or however, if I got to defend them for the entire year, I, I'm ready for that a hundred percent. And I say defend them because that's just where my heart lies in, in this professional world. I've been a, a one city guy. And because of that, my loyalty is going to be there. I, I mean, if, if I got to go through the same growing pains as some of them, I'll feel that too, because I'm going to stand on the soapbox for them. But I, I, I was telling people, uh, you know, about my retirement. It was like, um, I don't feel retired because everybody's retiring me. I'm like, go to work, get yeah. out. I want to see, I want to see guys sweating and nervous and, and, and out there trying to make it happen for themselves. Cause I did that for so long and not just only that, but I want to see the other side of it from being, from being a fan, from being, um, if I go to a game on the sideline and, and when pregame is over, I go sit in the seat somewhere or something like that. So um, I exhausted um, everything I could out of the game, out of pit, not not everything out of it, but I enjoyed my time playing. When it was time for me to, you know, take a bow, I was, I ain't gonna say I was ready for, but I was okay with it. I don't want to be signed in week 15 in hopes of like collecting another check, because no, I, I've done what I was supposed to do with, with everything in my career. And, um, Everything that I have going on right now, I'm looking forward to this phase in my life too, whether it's writing and my kids and everything else. My wife, I mean, I, I, I like this side of it so far, other than everybody chilling with me right now. <laughs> right. It's time to spread out a little bit, huh? yeah. <laughs> so to speak. You, yeah. uh, you were asked uh, over the weekend, Mike Tomlin was telling us that he asked you to speak uh, with the kids at the Steelers virtual uh, rookie mini camp. And I, I can't imagine how much you would embrace uh, a, a task like that because that's, that's a role that you always, whether it was as players union rep or just, just being Ramon over there on your side of the room that you, would, you, you always enjoy uh, having. How much did that mean to you? First of all, that, first of all, that he'd ask. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Because he could have asked anybody. Anybody. He, he, and for a guy like me to be fresh out like that, I figured he was going to give it a little bit more time. But why <laughs> not? Uh, Coach T has been saying it since the day that, you know, we had our conversation about um, me being done. And we've had conversations since then. And I've talked about my kids with him. He's talked about his kids with me. And one thing he continuously say, and he's, he's staying the same on it, is, I'm going to make sure you're involved in this organization as much as I can. He was like, you're going to ride this train with me as long as I can. And he's showing that. And I don't mind it because I love um, the Steelers organization. I just, you know, football, he always has the phrase, the, the, the phrase, football has afforded us a lot of different things in our lives, whether it's relationships, experiences, livelihood. And he takes that to heart. So if you're good to the game the way you should be, and he was just, you know, he always tells me, like, you you carved out a huge foothold here in this city. And as much as you can in your football life, I want you to be able to feel that as much as you can. So uh, it, it was good. The, the kids seemed like they liked it. I had some of the coaches reach out to me afterwards, some of the other staff that was on the call. I think it was like over 70 people on the call or on the Zoom. And um, they listened. Uh, he was able to let me show my personality to them. I said some jokes. They laughed. They had a good time. And, I gave them my experiences of what it means to um, be in that city of Pittsburgh. But not only that, I was real upfront and blunt with them about a lot of stuff too. Well, I'll tell you this, uh, you might not even know this, but 
but you left quite the impression on at least one of these young men. Kevin Dotson, the, the, the offensive lineman that the Steelers just took in the draft, yeah. across the top of his Twitter account has a big picture of Ramon Foster. I mean, you didn't I even know that. It. No. Yep. So I, you left some kind of impression on that young man. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's, no idea. That's, <laughs> yeah, and uh, well, he did, he obviously didn't let you let let you know about it, but it's up there. And 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 I know you know you and I had a talk over the weekend. You like him, huh? You think he he's like got a him. good future? Because I always I engage with our staff or that staff that's still there uh, mm -hmm. a good bit, and I always like to follow guys. And and when Kev and uh, the Steelers uh, they they drafted him, first thing I text him. Uh, you had to go get another big black kid from the okay. south. <laughs> that's a molar. <laughs> Like us and Kev laughed Some about more. it <laughs> because it's just they said he's very charismatic. They say he's a hard worker and it's uh, he got knocked because he's from a small school. And I think somebody Ooh. told me um, he um, they chose to let his tackle go to the uh, the combine instead of him. He was combine. So he worthy. never got a chance. He never he got go a chance. To, yeah, combine. he didn't go yeah. to the combine. So, uh, which I did. I just went and undrafted. I'm I'm looking forward to that kid um, carving out his niche, and I'm glad they didn't give him 73 too, because I'll say this because I didn't want if he put me up on his profile, I don't want him chasing me. I want him to be his own guy. You there know. You so cool. <laughs> that's that's good. I didn't know that. Now, everyone's talking about the AFC North and the quarterbacks because that's just what everybody talks about. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you spent a big part of your life making sure that your quarterback stayed vertical. So you understand that it's a pretty big deal. Oh, everybody's got a Heisman Trophy winning quarterback in the AFC North, whatever. <laughs> you know what else they all have in the AFC North? They've all got defensive lines who can eat those quarterbacks alive. Uh, yeah. Tell me about that and how important it's going to be to protect those guys. I, I want you to know I, I meant that. Like, I, and, and it was no slight towards anybody, but you know, like I know, Cincinnati D-line, if you just name two names, Geno and Dunlap, solid. Yep. You still, go to Baltimore. Still. 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 Yep. still you, you, if you say anything about them, Geno and Dunlap, 100%, you got your hands full for the entire. I don't care about the other end of it. You got to get past them, too. Okay, let's go to Baltimore. Baltimore D-line, historically, they've always found guys that stop the run. What do they make you do? Throw the ball. And then you want to throw the ball. Guess what they have? They have rushes. Judon on the outside. I mean, let's, let's be honest about that. Very solid defensive front, and they also have solid linebackers. But Baltimore also has a back end that can expose a quarterback. And the other side of it, let's go to Cleveland. Cleveland, they got one of the, I think, one of the best specimens in all of football. And not yeah. on top of that, they're getting him counterparts that are going to rush like crazy. Um, one of the biggest things that's, that's holding Cleveland back probably is just the change of the culture holistically. Mm -hmm. Like, once you get that, they've got all the pieces. They've had early first rounders, like, out of this world, okay? And here you go, got these shiny new quarterbacks. But <laughs> what have they been missing? Let's call it like it is with the shining new quarterback and all the other trinkets. I call them trinkets in my columns. I say the Browns <laughs> go out and they collect trinkets, but they never, they never take care of what needed to be taken care of, which yeah. is funny for a franchise that prided itself on having Joe Thomas for a decade. Thank you know you. what I'm saying? Yes. They had him, but no slight to the rest of the that guys. That was it. But that was it, you know, and, and Pittsburgh was a, a team that found balance in getting an O-line, you know, getting a stable running back position that was going to be able to to help out the quarterback. Not that Ben needed to help. You know, Ben by himself is expected to win at least eight games. Everybody else is just partying with him. Okay, so <laughs> I'll say that, but Burrow, I think, has a lot of talent. But what is their O-line situation like? You look at Cleveland, Pittsburgh, and Baltimore. They're all going to want to eat that up. And people felt slighted by me saying that. I'm not saying it's not going to be successful, but I'm saying that they need to get that O-line intact ASAP. You know, Cincinnati, just, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, Cincinnati. they made they made another pick. That they got – but people, people – it's funny when you see drafts and someone takes an offensive lineman and everybody goes, oh, they've, give, they've fixed their offensive line. Not for no. a couple of years they have it. <laughs> oh, it's, it's only been a couple of occurrences where I've personally mm -hmm. seen a guy that Marquise was able to do it and Dave was able to do it. Everybody That's else, it. 
you got to work through that thing, man. And it's not an easy task. That's why it's good to get a guy like Dotson who you can have uh, get groomed by somebody, you know, and that's you, you got to work through that. Uh, Baltimore's going to have uh, a void without Yonda being there. I mean, think about so much bigger than what people know is more of a void than they want to give it credit for guards mm-hmm. lives matters okay <laughs> mm-hmm. we matter in the middle and you look at the d line <laughs> cam into it up the middle you got gino and cincinnati and they'll move miles garrett to the middle and and, and uh cleveland like let's be serious like your protection of your quarterback is huge and if you throw a quarterback out there super early you can fracture their career and sometimes it never bounces back. And that's what I meant by that. Like, if he goes there and he's not protected or the offense isn't moving the line of scrimmage or they're not moving the pocket to where he can make plays, those beautiful dimes he dropped in college will just stay there. They won't transition <laughs> over, man. So protect him. And that goes the same for Lamar also in, uh, in Baltimore. Like, the league eventually catches up, and I think Lamar will – um advance his game i mean he's a heck of an athlete mm-hmm. uh, and that goes for the same thing with, with baker um young guy still learning it what is this his second or third offensive third player? this will be his third yeah that's i know be hopeful but it, at the same time like that change is the quarterback i think aside from the owner and i think coach Tomlin would say the same thing if you got owner you got quarterback when you find a good one that's the ranking. That's the hierarchy of how things goes because organizations live and die by that position. And of course, you have your great receivers, running backs, everybody play their part. But if you got a, 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 a quarterback that you know and love and can win you, like I said, the good ones are going to get you eight, nine, ten games by themselves. Okay. And after that, everybody else plays a part. You know, the defense, of course, it's, it's all that, but you get the gist of what I'm saying. The quarterback is a guy. And that, that goes the same thing when, you, you know, with, with Ben coming in this year. I'm sure Marquise and Dave and Al are going to lead the way and saying, hey, keep him up because we saw what it's like without him. You sure you don't want to do video? You sure? I don't know. All right. All right. Yeah, <laughs> the offer stands. The offer yeah. stands, my friend. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. I like it. Yes. <laughs>